Hello, I'm Jacob Whiten, Engineering Technical Support with Connect Tech. I'm going to take you through how to flash an NVIDIA Jetson TX2 or TX1 module. Please ensure that you're wearing an electrostatic discharge device, such as a wrist strap, when handling the Jetson TX2 or TX1 module and the Connect Tech Orbity carrier. First step is to remove the Jetson module from the dev kit. Remove the fan connector. We'll first need to remove the four screws. Once that is removed, brace with both sides and lift on an angle away from yourself. Then teeter back and it will pop off. Once the Jetson module is removed from the dev kit, you should install the standoffs on each corner prior to assembly onto the Orbity. Place the Orbity carrier on its backside so that the connectors are facing towards you. Place the Jetson module face down with the connector facing the Orbity. Align the standoffs the appropriate mounting screws. Apply equal pressure to the left and right mounting holes and the Orbity should pop into place. Once the Jetson module is firmly secured, please apply the four mounting screws to the Orbity carrier. The Jetson host flashing system that we are using in this video uses the Ubuntu 1404 distribution of Linux. Proceed to the NVIDIA embedded Jetpack download page. From here, download Jetpack and save the file. Go to the home folder and create a new directory. We called ours Video Jetpack. Proceed to the downloads folder. Copy the Jetpack download file and paste it in your newly created directory. Now we are going to proceed to the Ubuntu terminal. This is going to be the base home folder. Our Jetpack directory is under CD Video Jetpack. Our Jetpack directory is in this location. Ensure that the file is here and double check the ownerships. Ensure that the user that you are logged in is the active file permission. We're going to change the execution permissions for Jetpack installation so that it is executable. Notice after that this is complete, the file should appear in green and bolded compared to the Jetpack standard directory. We are now going to proceed to run the Jetpack executable. The Jetpack installation window should pop up. Hit Next. Ensure that is the directory where you wish to install your Jetpack. Hit Next. We're going to select TX1 because this is the unit we will be flashing. You will need to input your Ubuntu user password. Give it a minute and it should begin to populate.
change the installation actions to no action for host system. Select keep and apply. Change installation on target to no action. This will remove the externally supplied packages because it is not required for our board support package installation. We are not going to flash to OS image, so set that to no action. We essentially just want the file system and drivers to be selected. We set the host Ubuntu to no action because we do not require the development libraries for the Connect Tech board support package. Hit next. Accept all and it does take some time to install. Hit OK. This is going to unpack the driver packages and install the file system. Once complete, hit Next. You can choose to remove the download files. This will save some space if you're continually running through Jetpack installations. It might be advisable to have it installed for backup purposes, but we're going to remove it. Take note, in the top left, we have extracted file locations from Jetpack. Our TX1 folder will be named 64TX1. If we proceed back to the terminal, I'm going to enter that directory. That's for the Jetpack 3.1 installation. And then there's a second directory, which is the Linux for Tegra directory. This is where we will apply our board support package. Now that we have the Jetpack installed, we can proceed back to the internet browser to the Connect Tech homepage. Under support, select NVIDIA Jetson TX2 and TX1 solution support. Please proceed to the board support package. For our installation purposes, we are going to install TX1 solution. We have several L4T board support package releases. For this installation, we are using the L4T 28.1.0. Download this pack. This file will be saved into your downloads folder. Proceed to your downloads folder. We have the CTI L4T version 18. That is the package we have downloaded. We are going to copy this package Go back to the home where we had our Jetpack installation. Proceed to the folder 64TX1, then Linux for Tegra TX1. And paste that package into this location. Go back to the terminal. We're going to extract the CTI L4T Tegra package. We now have a new directory, CTI L4T. Let's enter that directory. These are the files that were extracted into the CTI L4T directory. In this directory, we have our flash script, install script, and readme. The readme instructions will be included, which detail the steps that we've done through this video, specifically for the software installation of Jetpack and for our CTI board support package, as well as change logs for individual carriers. From here, we can install the board support package. You should see the installation package as green and installable. So we can execute it with the dot slash install script. It will need to run with root privileges. If we take note on the extraction page, we now have our configuration files, kernel extractions, and our CTI board support package location. They are being copied into the Linux for Tegra TX1 subdirectory.
If we go back to our file directory, you'll notice that our configuration files have been added for our support carriers. There's the Astro, Cogswell, Elroy, Orbity, Sprocket, and Spacely carriers, the Rosie and Ruby embedded systems, and the Cogswell Vision system. With our Orbity carrier assembled, please ensure for the Orbity carrier that you do not have auto power on sequencing initiated, or else when the power is applied, the carrier will boot up. With our Orbity carrier assembled, first we install the power connector. Please ensure that the power supply connectors are securely fastened. Then, attach the OTG USB, which is plugged into our host system. This is all that you will require for the flashing process. To place the Orbity carrier to force recovery mode, hold the recovery, reset, and power buttons. The key is to hold recovery then power and reset. You want to release power first, then reset, and then recovery. The system should now be in forced recovery mode. To check that the system is initiating in forced recovery mode, we can proceed back to our computer and type LSUSB into the terminal. NVIDIA Corp will enumerate on the USB bus. If it is not, then proceed back to the previous steps and ensure that the cables are connected properly. Now that we have the Orbity in force recovery mode, to flash the system, we're going to proceed to the pseudo flash script. We want to use the Orbity profile. Do not include the configuration file extension. Just the Orbity name is required. Enter the installation location here and then hit enter. The system will continue through this flashing process and it will begin to populate the system with the board support package as well as the Linux for Tegra 28.1. This will take around 10 minutes to complete. Once this is complete, power down the device, remove the OTG USB, and the power connector the system off. You may choose to change the auto power on switch in the on or the off position, whether you want to use the power button or the system auto power on sequencing. Thank you for watching the Connect Tech tutorial video on how to flash your Jetson module. For more information for your Jetson solution, please visit connecttech.com slash Jetson.